Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey everyone, it's Wendy K. Laidlaw here from Heal Endometriosis Naturally. And as always, I hope that this podcast finds you well. Well, today I have got a podcast I'm going to be talking about, and it's called Make Younger You Proud. And it's come about because I kind of asked myself the question when I found a, an old photograph of myself when I was tidying up my study the other week there that would my younger self be proud of who I am today? And I had um I had a photograph taken when I was uh, away for um, a few days in the sun and I was feeling good and literally almost on top of the world and I saw this photograph and it really got me thinking of just like where that photograph was taken and the reason I'm going to share this with you is because I think sometimes we can be stuck in a situation in pain and inflamed and think that that is it and there's there's no way forward but I hope that this story inspires you. So I remember back to a time when I was 15 years old at my grandparents farm. At the side of one of their fields, I sat there shivering on top of a frost covered cold stone dike wall. My body was aching like I'd been stabbed with a thousand tiny sharp knives. Whilst I loved being amongst their many animals and outside in nature, there was little that could lift my mood and the feelings of despair that engulfed me at that time. You can see it in the photograph. I had already suffered from endometriosis pain for several years by this age and stage, and it felt like it was just too much to handle. Each month I cried and grabbed my abdomen, fearing I would die, almost wishing sometimes I could die if only to escape the pain. I was down, I was sad, and I felt terribly alone. My parents had their own challenges, but sadly my mother saw me as this hindrance, a form of unfortunate competition and almost a threat. So I never received, I felt the love and affection or sense of safety from her that I needed. Because let's face it, a daughter only really and truly seeks the love and adoration and encouragement from her mother. How else is a daughter to learn but from her mother on how to navigate the human body, let alone the human jungle with all its perplexities, predators and poisons out there. But back to that stone dyke wall, Whilst I was there, my uncle, who unfortunately had previously made some very uncomfortable and unwanted advances on me as I grew older, had taken the photograph without my knowledge. And the picture, if you see it, says all. You can see it on my Facebook group or Instagram. The misery in my face and the sadness in my eyes is evident for all to see. The deep pain and forlornness of my life weighed heavily upon my chest and I was trapped. I was immersed in physical pain. I was drowning in emotional pain and I was suffocating the deep dark well of darkness of aloneness. My eyes, often referred to as the window to the soul, showed this. They showed how much I was struggling inside. When I look at that photograph now, I really do feel such compassion for that younger me at that age and stage of my life. How little I knew of the world or understood about toxic people in it though. People, all humans, were terribly confusing to me then. They would say one thing yet do another. They would shout one minute and then the next behave like nothing had happened. They would cast an atmosphere across the room of dread and even upon you but say that they loved you. I would learn to try incredibly hard to work hard to please all of those toxic humans in my vicinity. I aimed to keep people happy in a vain attempt to save myself from their outbursts, rages, hurtful words that would sting my skin and my soul. 
the venom with which some of the words that poured out from them was like burning caustic acid and the insults frequently left deep emotional wounds in my spirit and a terrible sense of self. There, or rather, there is a word called samskara, which is often used in yoga and ancient Indian texts, referring to the spiritual and emotional scars as humans might take in and on. The theory of the samskara explains how and why human beings remember things and the effect that those memories have on people's suffering, happiness and contentment. I had a lot of those samskaras at that tender age of 15, but didn't know it. Although I kept my distress and my despair well hidden from everybody. By the age of 16, I had learned to develop this helpful mask that would hide the pain and my misery. The mask of a big wide open smile would be the surface presentation to the world and pretense that I was happy and I was happy to adopt it. As the years went on, I found it exhausting to keep up the pretense. I would increasingly seek the silence, solitude and sanctity of my own company and aloneness. Animals, primarily dogs and cats, were the only living beings I felt safe or relaxed with. My pets would show this consistent and unremitting love for me in their eyes and in their actions. Their beautiful energy was warm and safe. As I got older, I would learn to rush home from work and close the curtains and unplug the phone from the wall and do what I had to do to numb myself out with either cleaning the apartment or doing additional work in the evenings. People became unbearable to be around and something to be avoided. Well, most people anyway. Invariably, it was those people who were the harsh, demanding, self-entitled and critical ones. You know the type. I was surrounded and immersed by many humans like that growing up, so one has to learn to adapt. And we humans are very adaptable creatures. The human body readily adapts and responds to changing environmental influences, be them physically, emotionally and culturally. Adapt or die was my motto, a sobering motto on realisation for someone so young, but it served me well in that hostile environment at that time. So the big beaming smile and mask was perfected over the years and came first to ward off and away any inquiry about why I might look so sad, like the photograph on my wall, or the wall. I reasoned that better to be by myself and not let anyone know what I truly felt inside. It was not safe to be open. For if I shared my feelings and emotions with unsafe and toxic people, I would always be reprimanded with a harsh, scathing response for doing so. So my experience with my family was jarring to my nervous system, my immune system, hormonal system and digestive system. The betrayal, the mockery, the endless critical attacks and accusations of stop being too sensitive. So one adapts and learns to withdraw and protect. One learns life's lessons the hard way through the positive and negative feedback. And one learns to live with the pain. But that was then. That was almost 40 years ago. When I think of me at 15 years old now, I do ponder the question, would my younger self be proud of who I am now today? I think so. I, I know so. The many battles, emotionally, physically, spiritually, culturally, and relationally have been fought and won. But of course, the battles that ultimately won the war were on endometriosis. It would take me literally decades to figure out that I had choices, choices I did not know I had, that I had more control and influence than I realized. And it was by going super, super, super slowly at realizing the reality of what was around me and taking tiny, insy wincy steps that it became possible for me to escape the clutches of suffocating, controlling and toxic relationships. Please do not be under any illusion how toxic people and toxic relationships can affect your health. At that, at that point, relationships I did not know were affecting me physically and preventing my body from healing. I had no idea as a teenager the effects of living in high levels of fear, anxiety, confusion and long-term chronic stress and how that affected your body. Even if I did know, I needed a structured, strategic and safe pathway for extracting myself from that environment. And of course, safe expert guidance and mentorship. 
a good analogy I refer to this as is akin to or like backing out of a snake pit that you might find yourself in. Think of the film Indiana Jones, where he's dropped down into a pyramid and has to very slowly back out. To escape a snake pit with dozens of hissing and poisonous reptiles, it is essential to make no quick or sharp movements. The same goes for humans. You step out gingerly. You step out backwards, one step at a time, very, very, very slowly, for one does not wish to disturb the snakes and alert them and be bitten. When you are entrenched and surrounded by toxic people, you are their supply. Your bright light, your energy, your effervescent spirit feeds their darkness of the empty hole they have where a heart once lived. It is interesting that in some cultures that the womb is viewed as the energy center of the body. This is not surprising really given that it is the womb that is the organ to give new creation and to new life. Yet toxic people have no light or brightness or energy of their own. Toxic people's souls have been so badly damaged in one way or another that they need recognition and to be noticed and controlling others on a regular basis. They need to be seen and acknowledged so often that they'll do anything to feed their insatiable appetite for your light. They feed off of you. They need you. Hence why the clutches of control they try to put upon you when you're in a relationship with them and trying to escape. When I was 17 years old, I had the opportunity to see a world-renowned psychic woman privately. Mary was her name. I walked off the narrow cobbled street in Edinburgh down into her office. Her presence was warm and inviting. Shuffling with he heavy gasps, she led me to her back room, which was as dark as you would expect to see in those films. Mary wore a dark flowery print dress and was dwarfed by the red velvet armchair that she carefully groaned her way down into. Within minutes of our session beginning, she shuffled some cards and began laying some out on the table. Whilst I admit I was a little cynical about such processes and ready to dismiss anything she said, it was her sudden change in energy that intrigued me. She leaned forward and staring me straight in the eye said, Wendy, beware a woman with long blonde hair, for she would sell her granny to make her point and get her own way. She is of grave danger to you. I came out of the room shaken and distraught. I knew Mary was right. I had had this knowing and felt this for years about this woman with long blonde hair. I'd always brushed this dreaded and trapped feeling aside. I'd even felt a bad person for having any question marks about this woman in the first place. You see, the problem was that this woman was my mother. My mother was a strong Scottish Protestant and would say to me in anger regularly, God knows what you're thinking, Wendy, and he will punish you and you will rot in hell. Not very nice for a young girl to hear from her so-called loving mother. So sadly, I ended up fearing any thought that I had. This is where the adaptation of busyness came from, I see. Keep super busy, Wendy, to numb your thoughts. I would remind myself often. It is a clever tactic on one level, but it clearly exhausts and drains the body systems on another. I still lived at home at this stage and had been forced to leave school earlier than I'd wished. I was told to work in the family business under our close Hawkeye attention. I wasn't worthy of investment or intelligent enough by her standards to go to university. My mother was indeed a very scary woman. She had this stern reputation amongst her staff for losing her temper and raging at them without warning, knowing fittingly as the wrath of Kath. She actively enjoyed making the grown men who worked for her cry. In addition to her, much of my family was just as toxic. So I learned I could only rely upon myself to carefully navigate my way out of the snake pit of family and relationships I was in. I would be lucky as there would be many instances where I could get a clear guidance from within. Instructions, directions, reassurance almost. Some might call it God or higher power or inner wisdom or instincts. Whatever it was, it helped me to carry on in the darkest and the bleakest days. It helped me to persevere 
It helped me to keep my spirit and my soul protected and uplifted when my energy, my legs could not carry me any further. I needed that guidance and emotional strength to keep progressing forward in my life, for often life felt too hard and too harsh to live. Nothing and no one else was going to help me, I realized. I had heard stories of others having similarly uh, similar childhoods, but had at least one other human, nice, happy human to help guide them. At the age of 15, I was not lucky enough to have a teacher or relative to go to or to offer a kind word or notice my pain. Once at school, however, a teacher did ask how things were at home and I felt so sick to my stomach and said, fine. A deep sense of dread and panic though rushed cortisol through my body. I knew that if my mother had found out that anyone had ever inquired after her in any way, shape or form, then I would be in massive big trouble. Being in trouble for what? is still a little unclear, but what was evident and clear now is that back then, I really did relate to the Cinderella story in some ways. I do not joke when I say I had to clean the whole family house. I had to clean out the fire and the ash buckets from the fireplace. I had to walk miles to do the food shopping and cook the family meals. In the morning, I had to prepare my mother's breakfast tray and take it up to her and prepare a cup of tea to perfection. If the measurement of milk was not quite correct, the, the right amount, then I was sent back down to start it all over again. No fairy godmother arrived with a magic wand, sadly, and there was no gilded coach or horses appeared or no visit to a grand ball to dance at. No handsome prince came with a glass slipper either. However, as the years went on, I would adopt a mentality that saved me, a mentality of this life of mine was teaching me for my future purpose. It had to be. But all the pain, emotional, physical, spiritual, was for a greater reason. I do remember one particular instance when I was sat next to the fireplace on the floor and my mother was having one of her tirades. And for three hours, she went on about how awful a person I was. And I remember hearing this voice saying to me, don't switch off, Wendy, or it'll go straight into your subconscious. It was these messages and instructions like that that kept me going, that made me realize that all that I was going through was for a greater purpose, a greater reason, that there was meaning behind it all. And I had to think this way. To think any other way may have meant I would not be here today writing this email. Eventually, though, I would be able to escape the clutches of my mother, but sadly, but only by jumping from one chip pan into the fire, as the saying goes here in Scotland, meaning that the subconscious conditioning drew me towards similar people, and I bounced from one toxic relationship to the next. I recognize that that was the subconscious's way of trying to bring it to the conscious and trying to deal with these negative toxic patterns. With those bouncing around from one relationship to the next that was toxic, my endometriosis got worse and worse until, as you know, my story it finally floored me and forced me to take stock of what was happening now in the past and to recognize that something had to change. You may have heard me say before, we all seek change and fear change in equal measure. I knew I had to break free from the decades of subconscious conditioning that was poisoning my body and my mind and my spirit. Endometriosis, as it would turn out, would be the disease or the dis-ease that forced me to stop and reassess the past that I'd been running away from since a young age. I knew I could not stop regurgitating and dwelling on the previous events by myself as they would keep swirling around in the subconscious areas of my mind. For me, I had to be very stoic and firm with myself at points and sit down at the bottom of the stairs and say, Wendy, you have to put it all behind you and never think or talk about it again. Enough is enough. It would take for me to uh, for my body's response to that approach to have an increase of endometriosis expand its growth and grow to the point where I would feel forced to seek repeated medical help over many years from the mainstream medical machine. I would end up having six surgeries, developing other diseases from the internal subconscious dis-ease that I was feeling inside, as they say, 
which included, as you know, adenomyosis, chronic fatigue, thyroid issues, mitochondrial dysfunction, to name a few. However, following the gynecological medical machine pathway would make me even more ill. To add insult to injury, doctors would tell me that they could do no more for me after the sixth surgery, tell me that endometriosis was incurable, and of course you know it's not, is curable, is able to be put into remission, and that I had to live with the pain. My body, which some call the big subconscious, was trying to get my attention clearly, and the only way to get my attention was for it to go on strike. I would end up chronically ill and bedridden for over two years in the most indescribable and constant pain. I would come to be told through a blood test that I was near total organ failure, which was news that scared me the most. I had a strong spirit and mind, yet my body was fading quickly. A body of Charlie Chaplin and a mind of Charles Atlas, as one of the sayings goes, meaning my body was not as strong as I wished, but my mind and spirit wanted to carry and save the world. Yet the good news is that the turnaround in my health and in my end of all's journey began with the most unexpected action. That action was to pick up a pad of paper and start writing. Write out how I felt and what scared me. Write out, write out what was happening in my body. Write out the questions I wanted answers to, like asking who was safe and who could I trust and who could truly help me. And then the most surprising of all was the answers I got back that started streaming through to me, through my writing and through my instincts. Writing opened up the development of this inner knowing and guidance. Little by little, little became a lot. And before long, the other snake pit relationships I'd become attached to became super clear to me. And I developed the strength to eventually untangle myself from them all once and for all. I would come to realize how and why these toxic people were making me so physically ill and preventing my healing. Then begin the emotional and physical healing journey with many experts, caring and kind, beautiful women who generously learn to understand me, hear me and support me back to health. As I write this and I speak this podcast to you, I feel emotional. I think younger me would be crying with such big, fat, heavy sobs of relief to see me today, here and now, free and writing this email to you. I think younger me would be shocked and filled with such disbelief that we did indeed finally escape. And delighted, of course, that endometriosis and all the other conditions are in remission and I'm pain free. But the journey became so much more than escaping. The journey taught me to go inwards and to become whole and to understand the responsibility I had towards myself. I will always protect and be the champion for all parts of me. This is why I inspire you and other women with endometriosis to embrace their emotions and all your parts too, so that you can join me into putting your own endometriosis condition in remission and hopefully join me in spreading the message of hope and healing of endometriosis naturally, globally. So do I think younger me would be proud? Yes, holy and finally proud that I could untangle the wicked web of deceits and mistreatments and callousness that surrounded me growing up for decades thereafter. Growing up, I had no choice or power or control, but now I do. As I've said before, to understand the whole of you entirely, you need to understand the other parts of you, which includes the younger versions of you at different ages and different stages. At each age and stage, there may be some scaras or scars that have caused deep subconscious wounds that still play out in your life and relationships today. The relationships that you're drawn to that keep harming you and hurting you, you don't know why. Scars want to be healed, yet the idea of allowing them up to the conscious train of thought may feel overwhelming at times. It is natural to have avoidance to those feelings where hurt has been felt in the past. And this is why the art of journaling is an integral part of the end of all healing journey. journey. Journaling is a non-negotiable when I work with private clients. If they do not journal, we do not continue to work together. Journaling is that important. Because journaling allows you to softly, gently and kindly hear the long held hurts of your heart. Journaling allows you to become the observer of your thoughts, your beliefs and your feelings. 
And journaling allows you to hear that inner guidance system that I talked about, that you need to guide you who to reach out to for help and to heal your mind, your body, your emotions and spirit. Obviously, along with the End of Us team, of course, and then learn how to fly and even climb mountains. In this past two weeks, I've had two former students climb mountains. One, because she wanted to do so and was well enough to do so, having uh, reached a point in her journey where she has uh, improved her emotions and her sense of self so beautifully on the End of Us Academy journey. And another who, again, who's completed and put her endometriosis into remission and been asked to model on top of a hill for a sports company. So this is why I created the powerful, impactful 21 day challenge to inspire and lead women like yourself to become an unstoppable end of boss. These just two of many, many women now that I talk about started with the 21 day challenge. They put their pinky toe in the water and got a sense of what it's like to be part of a safe, loving and supportive community. The 21 day challenges allow you to get a sense of what is possible in just 21 days. They say it takes 21 days to create a new habit. And the new habit is about learning the importance of self-care and inner connection. The 21 day challenge is designed to allow you to go super, super slowly and start to get to know all parts of you, especially the younger you that may have felt sad, lost, abandoned and alone growing up. The 21 day challenge allows you to listen and start to integrate the scars and the samskaras from the past, but one day at a time. The 21 day challenge leads you gently and lovingly along a proven pathway that has been tried and tested with hundreds of women now over the past two years with such great success. So please do read the burgeoning amount of testimonials on the page. And then the 21 day challenge allows for a gentle awakening to your tender heart and its hurts, and most importantly, to your inner strength and powerful spirit and to the answers you seek. For I know that if you are listening to this podcast, you understand well at your core that the body is a self healing mechanism and is always wanting to heal. I know that you get that and truly understand that at your core. I know that you get that it's a whole body, whole person approach to healing endometriosis, and it's not a quick fix either. You know intuitively that it takes time, at least six to 12 months, and also that it's essential to be around women who truly see you and all the potential you have within you. But right now, your light and potential are shrouded in pain and hidden from sight as a protective mechanism due to your earlier conditioning or environment. Something brought you to me, drew you to this, and it is to that part that I speak to now. A part of you knows it's time to open the door to a new way of being and living and feeling. Your younger you may be hidden and hurting deep down inside, but you still have this fantastic strength within you. Your younger you may feel frightened and confused by all the conflicting advice and mistreatment you're receiving now but it is your future you that is here now and ready to pick up the baton. Your younger you knows you are ready for safe, supportive guidance and on a unique and encompassing level to allow you to hear and embrace your emotions, feelings and fears. Your younger you needs you to take that leap of faith and join the 21 day challenge. It even comes with a seven day money back guarantee. So whilst money can always be earned back, you can't get back the time that has been lost. You have already spent enough time suffering and in pain. And I want to remind you that endometriosis is not a life sentence. Endometriosis is an indication of dis-ease subconsciously and it's showing up in your body. Endometriosis is a sign that you can and you must break the old conditioning that no longer serves you because you're worth it. I never thought I would say this, but I'm even thankful for endometriosis showing up in my body. It was my body's way of speaking to me. I have broken the ancestral line of centuries of suffering from the generations of relations that went before me, and you can do the same. I am here today, pain-free, content, peaceful, and healthy, and now within harmonious relationships with beautiful, safe, and exceptional people who lift me up. 
and add that most important sparkle to my life and have helped to heal my soul and samskaras. I am here today helping other women like you break free from the physical pain, emotional pain and all conditioning that no longer serves them, whilst helping them embrace their real purpose in life. I know that if you're still listening to this podcast at this point, you know you're ready to take that leap of faith and step out towards that beautiful future you, because future you awaits with open arms. So make younger you proud. I can't wait to meet you on the 21 day challenge. This will be the last one for 2021. So make sure to join whilst you can. And I look forward to seeing you on the inside. To your health. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.